Hi, I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And today our tutorial is going to be about some common handling mistakes that we see out there. Um, we're gonna lead you through a few of our like kind of top ones that we see everybody having in the ring. And if you'd like to see the full tutorial of 21 common handling mistakes, head on over to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and we will show you the full tutorial there. If you have any other questions or you think you're making a mistake, why not comment it below and we'll see if we can help you out. Now, when we look at our dog's fronts, um, again, uh, we see a lot of people do this, right? Um, actually, that was kind of how I was also taught to stack a dog. But we, again, really want to make sure that we have like full control of our dog and see how his toes are pointing out. You want to make sure that you're lifting from the elbow. Here's his elbow and you're slightly turning his head the, the same way you want his toes to go and then forward and see how his toes are perfectly straight now. And then you would want to do the same thing on the other side, picking up from the elbow, not picking up anywhere else on the leg. And again, you have him in a nice straight position, right? So many of you, email me, write to me, or on my webinars, and you say, I can't get my dog stacked. My dog is nine months old, should I wait till they're more mature? But the answer is no. The answer is you are the boss, they are a dog, and you dictate the performance that you want out of them. So, for example, I was on the table here with Ripley, I was talking to the camera, I had a treat down, I had the lead down around his neck, I wasn't paying attention, I was pretending I was gonna stack him, and he just like said, screw you lady, and jumped off the table. We all saw that, we caught it on video, right? So then I immediately put him back up on the table and thought, okay, well he feels comfortable enough to jump off here and make a fool out of me on camera. I put him up here, I wasn't tough with him, I didn't do anything, I just put the collar where it should be and I had control of his head. Once I had absolute positive control of his head, I could stack all four feet, he held it still, I could switch my hand from holding his whole muzzle to holding the back of the lead, what like I would in a show ring, and I showed him the bait and he gave me ears, which proves that he wasn't upset by the experience because I wasn't hard on him, I wasn't rough, I didn't even correct him. There was no reason to correct him because when he jumped off the table, that was my fault. I wasn't giving him a clear signal that this is exactly what we were going to do in exactly this moment. And this is a five month old cattle dog, right? He is very, very willful. And you know, it is just something that you have to dictate what is happening. So hopefully we can recreate that one more time. But like I said, this is, we're going to try to not edit things out of here so you can see exactly what is happening in real time. So Ripley sees that I have a treat. So the first thing I have to do is get his attention away from that. How am I going to do that? I'm going to put it in my mouth just because that's the easiest place to put it. Give him a little tiny piece because you know, he's doing the right thing right now. So there we go. He has this little piece. Look at where I have the lead. I have it right up and underneath his chin. And I'm just going to tighten it a tiny bit. I'm going to put my finger right here and I'm going to hold on to that head. I'm going to ask him to stand up. Stand up, Rip. Good boy. Stand up. I'm just going to shorten this leash here so it looks neater on the camera. Okay, so I'm just going to move him a little bit more away from me. I'm going to reach one elbow, 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 never the leg, head in a straight line. Elbow on this other leg over here, straight up and down, putting the feet where I want. Now I'm just gonna, he's a little bit tense, right? Doesn't know what's going on. I'm not his mother. I'm just gonna let him relax. Now underneath, hawk, making sure it's straight up and down and at that 90 degree angle. Good boy. But like, I'm telling him, I am the boss. You can stand here, you're five months old. No, stay, stay. Now he's testing me because the first time he was like, what are you talking about? Now I'm going to just ask him to have his tail out. So it shows that he's a little bit more snow. Stay. Good boy. Stay. No, stay, stay. Total control of that head. It's taking me two hands right now to control his head. Now I want the leash behind his ears. Ears up. Good boy. Head straight. Show the bite to the judge. No. Good boy. Fight. Yes, good boy. Oh my God, you're so good. Oh my goodness, right? And look how happy he is. Like 
was he super happy when I was like correcting him? But what were my corrections? They were no and a little tiny shake of the head, like nothing. But just telling him how good he was. Yes, I know, Ripley. Right? And this is a short lesson. He did everything I've asked him to do. He has not been on this table until literally 20 minutes ago. So this is how we make sure we have complete control of the head to make sure we can always stack our dog in the right position. Don't let your dog be the boss. Control that head and you will be able to stack them to perfection yourself. The judge finishes examining our dogs and too many of you are just... Now you're done too, right? The judge is walking over to watch your dog go down and back, but you're not sure. Maybe they're walking to the camera's point of view because they want to stand back and look at your dog, but you're like, huh, whoo. Yeah, okay, that exam was over. We're all good now, right? And what is the camera seeing right now? It's seeing me looking like a buffoon and okay, not looking his best. So once you have spent, you know, this is why you are watching and don't, I see people doing this too, right? Like the exam is over and they're just like, oh, good boy. We made it. Meanwhile, the judge is like where the camera is and they're not seeing what they want to see. So once the, you know, the judge has gone over your dog, give them something to look at, right? And if there is a leg out of place, quickly fix it, but get that outline and give the judge some eye contact. Like, yeah, my dog, my dog looks great. Too many people, once the exam is over, they're just like, oh, they're so relieved, right? And I, like, I get that but you need to wait. Um, this is why you've watched the judging earlier, right? Once the judge is finished the exam, look at the judge in the eye, give them some eye contact, give them that outline, and maybe the judge is going to stand back and compare you to another dog in the ring. Maybe they're gonna ask you to move down and back. Maybe they're gonna ask you to move in a circle, but you want to be presenting the best outline that you can and even if that means, okay, you need to like fix a couple things, but you're still really giving as much outline to that judge as possible. If you have a breed that the tail is supposed to be up, make sure the tail is up. If the tail is supposed to be curled, making, making sure it's curled and up. If the tail is supposed to be down, don't get your dog so excited that the tail is up when it should be down, right? Give that judge the correct outline until they move away and stop looking at your dog. This is another reason why it's so important for you to watch judging. And even though you've watched judging, maybe in the heat of it in best of breed, the judge is going to be walk by your dog and stand back and look at yours compared um, to the other dogs in the ring, right? You can see I'm still talking to you and correcting my dog stack. You can be doing the same thing in the ring, right? When you're in the ring with your dog, it's like you're having a conversation with the judge. You are trying to sell the, the judge something, right? You are trying to sell the judge. This is my dog. My dog is the best dog. So you have to be ready, right? You have to have the stage set. Every time the judge looks over at your dog, you can't just be doing whatever you want. You have to be prepared to win at any point. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial about handling mistakes. Just a little reminder that if you head on over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com, you can see the full tutorial. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought, and as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content, and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. That way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. <laughs>